Hi everyone, this is Cyrus for iPhoneS.com and iPhoneAppsFinder.com. Today I'm just going to cover a few new features in iOS 7 that I personally find interesting. There are so many new features and so many new things to think about in iOS 7 and you're going to need more than just a couple of 10 minute videos to cover them. But for starters, everything happens on your settings page again, like other iOS releases. Different look. Again, everything you want to change usually happens here, whether it's Wi-Fi, mail settings, location services, app notifications, everything is here. I find this particular page very interesting because a lot of cool stuff and a lot of pe stuff that people are asking about actually happens right here. So let's say you want to turn off the moving background, which Apple introduced and a lot of people were wowed and it, they were interested in it. but when you use it for a while, maybe it's not for you and you think, okay, I'm going to turn it off. So how you do that is you go to, so you general, you tap right there, and then you say reduce mo motion, and I have already turned it off, and I'm going to cover it why in another video. It's actually a battery saving measure. So this is the first one. So you, you turn it off, and you take care of the moving background. You also want to take care of your app refresh rate and that's very important because again it's a battery saving measure and sometimes you just don't need this. For some apps you do and if you if you do need it for some apps you want to set it up set it up manually for each app. So you can turn it off for for instance for iBody and turn it off for Zombies Run. These are all both fitness applications. So you want to be aware that again, it happens right here in general. So a lot of cool stuff that you do is right here. And if you go through the menus, if you go through the small little de details, if you read them, you can figure out pretty much everything you want to do. And Apple doesn't talk about all the features that it offers, but you should be able to find it. That's, the, that's what the software is about. It's about being intuitive and being easy to use and I wouldn't say this is the most the best the best one yet. I I do have some issues with the way iOS 7 is designed and I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well. There are some annoying things about it that I'm going to cover in another video and I'm sure you've read about it also. So, going back to this page, you have these three different options here, guided access, switch control and assistive touch. Now, these are all very interesting by themselves. So guided access is, you can think of it as turning your iPad into one single app. So let's say you want to give your child or anyone an application and just have them play with that and nothing else. This is what it does. So let me go and let's say we want to play some chess, right? Chess is my favorite game and if you've been following our videos you've seen we've pretty much covered every quality chess application that you can think of on YouTube. So you tap on your home button three times and this is where you can enable, disable, touch and motion. So I'm going to disable and enable to keep touch enabled. So I start it Now, if you want to exit normal way, it's going to tell you right there. As you can see, the triple click the home button to exit. And if you want to exit, you have to enter your passcode. And the passcode is let me go and now show you where the passcode is and how you can how you can set it up actually. So this is where you set up the passcode. And you can also set up the shortcut. It's very useful. It Not everyone's going to need this, but just think about the possibilities of how you can just use focus on one app and use the passcode to make sure that people don't exit the guided access. This is important if you want to use your tablet, for instance, with the way I've set up here is I when I turn my head to the left, it 
enables Siri and if when I turn it to the right, it enables the scanner the scanner menu. So you can you can change it and do anything else that you want. Let's say you wanna do decrease volume, right? If you do right head movement. So what it does is it's gonna use the camera and the the movements that I make with my head to determine. So when I turn he my head to the left, Siri not available. Connect to the internet. Siri not available. Connect to the internet. And not available. when I turn it to, to the internet. Siri not available. Siri not available. Connect to the internet. I cannot show it in the, on the video, but when I turn my left to my head to the left, that's what happens. Now I have had issues with this again the ca you have to be very careful how to use this sometimes I'm turning my head to the right and still does what it does right now show, show Siri so it's not perfect I wouldn't say maybe I'm doing something wrong I don't know I set it up so that the left does this and right does that and sometimes it works just fine and sometimes it doesn't so I don't know maybe it's the angle or how you're doing it but you get the point. So that's what the feature is about. Again, not for everyone, but let's say you're someone who has trouble using the tablet or you're working on a sophisticated program application, this could help. You can define your switches, you can add new ones. So it's up to you and you don't have to use head movement. You can use different things can use the screen information you can select your source and go from there and I personally just wanted to use head movement because it's easier to test for this particular video so I turned that off because I find it annoying it just and you have assistive touch again this is a useful application if you don't want to touch your screen if you have issues touching your screen whatever the case so what I've done is I have two you can select your own gestures. Let's say I want to do this particular gesture, right? Maybe it's useless, but it's just let's just try it. So when I turn it on and I go to my favorites, So it's not exactly the best gesture that I've chosen here, but there you go. Automatically does that. Now this is a useless one that I've created, but you can do a simple swipe down for instance to get your search box to start searching for whatever you need. So you can be a little bit creative here. So you just touch it and it automatically does what you need. And if you want to keep your sanity, you probably want to turn it off because a lot of these features are not designed for average folks. They're designed for people who have a special needs or trying the special applications. So you want to be aware of this when trying these different features. I would recommend suggest suggest that you turn assistive touch off as well. Also guided access, not everyone's gonna need it, but for learning is important. So just five different tools or different features in iOS 7 that I like the most. For start, do you want to turn off? you reduce the motion on your screen you do the reduce motion thing if you wanna control app refresh again you have that option in the background app refresh option the from general page you go there and you select how you want your app to deal to do the refresh 
And if you go and want to do the assistive touch or the switch controls, you set up your switches and play around, it's up to you. But that's iOS 7, a ton more features. Just wanted to cover five of them. And five of them that probably are not going to get maybe a lot of attention or maybe they will, I'm, I'm not sure. But if you have any favorite features, maybe please leave it in the comment section. And I'll be back with more videos covering more features that I find. I'm not going to cover the common ones that everyone is talking about. I'll try to see which areas people are not focusing on. So we'll try to cover those. And again, thanks again for watching, guys.